Hello, you are listening to Dr. Shushma Singh today in Unit 3, Social, Human and Gender Development. We are discussing topic perspectives on women and development. Now, let us discuss gender relations framework. Both the structural explanation outlined about the make global generalization about the effects on women of capitalism and its interplay with patriarchy. These have been critiqued by a group of women who promoted the gender analytic approach to development for being too monolithic to be of much use in practice. At the same time, the VID promotion of the category women was also found wanting for the exclusive focus on women creates women and men is isolable category. Those who promote the gender analytic approach adopt social relations of the gender as their chief analytic category and extend the Marxist concept of social relations beyond the production of objects and commodities to areas of gender relations such as procreation, care of child, old and sick and to what all comes under the daily reproduction of labor. Instead of seeing power rooted in man and denied to women in all circumstances, this approach sees power in general inherent in gender relation. While it explains women's subordination in gender relations in household, it does not limit itself to the household and analyze how asymmetrical gender relations springly form the household interact relate and define relations in the broader economic arena. Gender relations thus are not merely male-female relations, they refer to the full assemble of social relationship through which men become men and women become women. More than the sex, it is the socially differentiated arrangement and patterns of gender behavior and relations that define the differential experience of the world by man and woman. The gender relations framework thus frees women and men from any biological determinism while at the same time not negating the effect of different sex bodies leading to the different rules and practices coming into operation so as to define gender relations and make them gender inequality. The framework goes further to emphasize that other social relations such as class, race, ethnicity, religion, etc. meditate to define the trans and translate gender inequality so that neither class nor sex nor any other attribute has prominence over other as a determining principle of individual identity, social position and power. By rethinking of men and women without a universal structure of patriarchy, the gender relation approach makes it possible for constructing gender subordination in different societies, communities, institutions and arena of action in the historically specific manner, thus making for a more realistic and pragmatic attempt at changing how men and women work, live and relate. Ascription of gender role is often done discreetly. It may be implicit rule and practices that promote one gender rather than the others and there are strong ballistic ideologies supporting them. Many gender discriminatory practices like the sexual division of labor, construction of an elaborate and sacrificial motherhood or violent and aggressive manhood stand to be questioned more logically once it is 
realized that they are neither instinctual or nor dictated by biology rather it is an elaborate social system of gender relations that defines them and that privile- privileges one gender over the other in terms of resources and power lastly development planners must realize that gender is never absent though family is a critical site for the beginning of its operations it operates as a pervasive allocation principle determining the participation of men and women in all social institutions it links uh, production with reproduction and domestic domain with the public domain and the microeconomic unit with the large larger economy a gender relation approach has the advantage of being an inductive mode of analysis and can thus explain empirically found contradictions of subordination and power and the multiplicity of outcomes of developmental interventions sometimes emancipatory sometimes making for more oppressive and subordinating conditions for women across the world now let us discuss the next point that is empowering women for development very closely connected with the issue of women's development is the question of women empowerment but what does empowerment mean and how can development bring it about the term is contentious yet it is important not to see it equivalent to greater participation of women in economic activity for economic activity do not always improve women's condition and often add extra work burden on her the term empowerment has within it the highly contentious concept of power which is understood differently by different people in an article what is empowerment jo roland makes a distinction between power over and power to the first implying that the some people have power or control over others hence an instrument of domination and the second as generative power a power of stimul- to sim- stimulate to lead without a conflict of interest a power that does not seek to dominate or subordinate rather a power that can resist and challenge the coercive intention of the power over empowerment generally defined as bringing women from outside the decision making process into it such that they have access to political structures and decision making to market and income and more generally to the state where they are able to maximize opportunities without constraints of the family community or the state a feminist definition of empowerment however is broader for its demands a consciousness of one's own interest and how they relate to the interest of others so that decision making is based on knowledge of self and others and an assessment of ability to exert influence empowerment in the feminist sense would employ a realization of the power over as well as the power to resist negotiate and change the ability to act and exert influence thus required the empowered to understand the internalized op- oppression as well as the dynamics of oppression such that the power is not given or received rather it comes from within empowerment is thus a process and development itself should not be confused as empowerment in some of the policies of the state as it has been pointed out that goal of development should be women's empowerment this implies that women gain in self confidence and 
take charge of creating for themselves the conditions that will facilitate the maximization of their human abilities and poten- potentialities. Now let us conclude the lesson or unit. Gender issues and gender analysis are today regarded as significant of the priorities in developmental policies and planning. Since the 1970s, a number of things have been accomplished as far as integrated gender in development is concerned. There has been a lot of thinking on cultural stereotypes and changing them. Anti-discriminatory legislation in all walks of life has been passed and state and national machineries for looking into the women's affairs have been successfully set up. However, there is serious rethinking by feminists on their goals and strategies for mainstreaming gender in the developmental process first feminist theory ever since it has taken the postmodern turn has itself found it increasingly difficult to have gender as a universal reference point for analysis as well as action. The deconstruction of gender and women while on the one hand and acknowledgement of multiple and distinct social identities of women and their often contradictory political interest yet on the other hand is vastly confusing for it there are no shared gender interest of women across the country and world then it makes little sense of privileging gender in development planning and interventions also, while a lot of feminist passion went in bringing the issue of gender on the center stage in the developmental discourse, feminists have realized that developmental agencies, nations and their machineries have co-opted the feminist vocabulary without either incorporating the ideology or translating it into sufficient and necessary action to change the realities of the women. Women have been offered tokenistic and marginalized position with tight, little or no access to the power. The state even when it appears to be democratic, progressive and proactive seemingly offering space to women for renegotiating rights and privileges in actuality implements policies and programs that have strong shades of capitalist and patriarchal control and women's concern are at best incorporated in the superficial and fragmented manner. Policy documents which incorporates states vision of equality and justice to women are prepared every now and then. However, these largely remain as pieces of paper and only contribute to increase the volume of the state rhetoric on women. In this unit, we have covered a vast area related to gender issues in development as human being is at the center stage of all development. The gender issues can no more be negated, neglected if we are to make development sustainable. Here we discussed the impact of development on women, women as a constituency of development and various perspective on women's development. Here we want to close our today's lecture as well as the unit. Thanks for listening.